So, Jason, it's great to have you on the podcast um, from Bali, I understand. Is that right? That's right, Trevor. So happy to be here. And uh, we were just talking before hitting record. Most of the times being in Bali, and you know this yourself as a podcaster, a, a lot of the guests comes from North America. And so I usually have some very odd hours for recording very <laughs> early in the morning or late at night. And what a joy to record in the afternoon. So this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jason. And indeed, if you know your own podcast, let's give that a quick plug. Yeah, well, um, aside from the usual bio that I know you go through is, um, you know, I've been living out here in Bali for the last three years, uh, I had a chance to write a book called selling with love, and I host a podcast of the same name. I've had a chance to interview people from around the world, some of the best in sales. And then from that, I've also written my own book, which talks about the concepts of selling with love, which I know is really funny, because most people in sales are not going to think love is supposed to be mixed <laughs> into it. Um, and so depending who I speak to, uh, I'll often use some other names. So if it's like people that are very hardcore in sales and completely reject the idea that love and sales, that doesn't belong together. Well, I'm, I'm advocating for more care in sales. I'm advocating for more leadership in, care, uh, in sales. And so love actually tends to speak more to the people I genuinely uh, find myself wanting to help, which are these ethical businesses that are looking to do good in the world, but have maybe alienated themselves from the possibility of seeing sales as a good thing when we absolutely need them to be excellent at sales, to gain attention, gain trust, and bring their products to the world if they're truly doing something amazing. Well, that's great. And, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about Selling with Love because it was the, uh, it was the book and uh, some information that uh, I received by, you know, via someone from your, about yourself that caught my attention. And I thought, I think this is a great subject for our, our listeners, you know, selling with love, whether using that in a presentation or a pitch or on a day-to-day -day sales interaction. So, so Jason, let's just wind it like back a little bit. You know, where did selling with love? What was there a seminal moment you thought this? You know, selling with love—that's what it's all about. I need to, I need to explore this. I need to write a book. I need to start a podcast. I need to be out there banging the drum. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because you know, I you think like I come out of nowhere. I wrote the book, I have the podcast, and kind of everything got public really quickly. But it's an idea I've been incubating for over six, seven years. And what I've noticed myself is everywhere I'd go work, like I was known as the guy who really loves to sell. Like I'd work in an organization and I'd get that kind of buzz, that enthusiasm that comes when you get into a, a sales interaction and people would be like, oh, Jason, you know, he just loves selling. And that was kind of like the first clue. Um, but I often tell a story from when I was a teenager, which was like selling chocolate door to door. And uh, I always call this the origin point. So Jason, <laughs> maybe 16 years old at the time, uh, doing a charity run at my high school and going door to door selling chocolate. People are happy. I'm asking him for $2. They're buying chocolates, chocolate covered almonds. They're delicious. So that's lovely. And I'm like, wow, people are happy. Sales is a good thing. But it's when I went to knock at like the sixth or seventh door down my street. And the lady says, well, let me ask my daughter if she wants any. And lo and behold, the daughter comes down the stairs and I, I'm a French Canadian, went to French school. So this lady I didn't know, she went to English school and was about my age and beautiful woman and ends up being my first girlfriend that came from that interaction of being in sales. So, you know, writing a book on selling with love by coincidence, well, maybe it was predestined, you know, um, but Great lo and behold, what, what, what happened is um, I shared the talk about why I felt that selling was the greatest expression of love. I thought being able to sell when you come from the heart and you know that what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return, that's what selling with love is. And I needed to kind of justify to people that I'm not crazy. You know, <laughs> I had all this enthusiastic enthusiasm about selling. And to me it was like, I know I get to improve these people's lives when they buy. So of course I'm enthusiastic. And when I gave that presentation and kind of announced that theory, like people resonated well, they had never heard something like this. And they're wondering, wow, this is really helpful. And so I kept going. I kept refining the idea. I looked for evidence and started putting pieces together. And lo and behold, here we are now. So how would you recognize or how would you help listeners define if, you know, I mean, some people listening to this might be thinking, well, yeah, I'm kind of think I'm doing that, Jace. Um, but is there a way of actually recognizing if you are selling with love without even realizing it, maybe? Yeah, it's... Um... You know, I, I worked in a personal growth field for quite a while. So pardon if I use esoteric terms like energy, but that's truly how I defined it. And I think that'll make the most sense for people. Um, 
I find that in every sales transaction, there's an energy. And uh, part of those is like money I find is just labeled as stored energy. Goods and services is, you know, took energy to create them and you offer them. And so an exchange happens, right? So I call it an exchange of energy. And then in that, I also say that a part of that transaction is actually emotion. So the way to recognize if you're selling from love or not is to recognize what's the main emotion that's kind of in you while you're selling. And you can kind of feel it, you know, when somebody you're selling to and you're like, oh, like, is this really going to be good for them? Oh, I don't know if I'm good enough to sell this to them. Oh, my, my God, they can tell that I'm not confident. And now a ton of fear comes in the way, right? And so in the simplest of terms, you got to do a gut check in the sales process. Are you coming from fear or are you coming from love? And again, if the word love seems too heavy for people, then think about like, am I caring for this person? Am I showing that I'm leading them to solving this problem? And those are going to be some gut questions that you can ask that makes you see, okay, am I on the right path or am I actually having more interest and need in my own needs as opposed to the needs that I'm trying to bring for the other person? So is part of what we're talking about here, Jason, a kind of from a salesperson's point of view, a, a psychological thing and that selling with love helps you get over that psychological barrier, as you say. Of, I mean, we know lots of people who uh, nowadays, you know, try and sell by email because it's just, it's that kind of there's no connection then, is there? You send out an email, hey, buy this. You don't phone people up. You don't go and see them so much. Because when, you, when you're actually interacting with a human, as you say, it, there is an emotional connection. And, and that kind of sounds as though sometimes people shy away from that, frankly, because they're thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, don't want to be, I don't want to be salesy or whatever. What you're saying is it kind of spins that on its head a little bit. Well, you know, it's interesting because I call it selling with love, but my definition of sales encompasses so many activities. To me, there's even that definition existing in sending out that email. Like, what was the energy you had and what was the emotion you had sending out that email? Was it as, as you define, it's like, oh, I'm just going to send an email so I don't need to really connect with them. Mm. Is that, is that loving? Or if you're like, you know what, I'm going to send that email because maybe this is the one medium that I can finally reach them and share the message that I've always wanted them to understand how much value I want to give to them. And so let me write this email because this might be the best way for me to reach them right now. And then you can also think, well, maybe I need to pick up the phone. Maybe I need to meet them for, you know, face to face, regardless of what medium you choose to communicate with. It's what's that, what's that mindset you have around doing the activity? Is it a necessary evil for the business growth? Or is it something that you're genuinely excited about the impact you're going to have in somebody's life when you, they actually buy your product and service. Now it doesn't seem like you're being manipulative. It doesn't seem like you're being salesy. It's you caring and doing your best to reach these people and make them understand. That's interesting what you say about mindset. Uh, I, I talk personally a lot about mindset when I'm working with people. I've got this kind of circle that has knowledge, mindset, attitude in there as, as three key components. And um, I, I, was, I had somebody on the podcast recently who talked about the fact that getting in the mindset of when you're wanting to create a sales interaction, whether that's a one-to-one, -one, a sales pitch presentation, whatever it is, put yourself in the mindset that by you know, making that call, doing that pitch, doing that presentation, you're actually doing the other person a favor. Because, you know, you're, you're bringing to the table something that they probably need. And if you don't bring it to the table, they'll never know about it. So it's a kind of, it, it is that mindset thing. And I think that's a, a great point. And you also mentioned about, you know, your, you, you def I, I noticed in your book, you said, you know, as you said earlier, sales definition, an energy exchange between two conscious beings. So, is the combination of getting the energy level, the mindset, is this all about the, you know, the kind of new setup in terms of we want to be successful in that sales arena? Yeah, because if, if I want to be successful in sales, right, like if I wanted to take this completely left brain, right, I'm like, all right, Trevor, you want to be better at sales? No problem. Let's go online. Let's find best ways to close a deal. Typical objections to come up and how to handle them. I can go get some training on like best ways to open up my lines and do all my everything that I can learn from the skills perspective. Yeah. It's not hidden. It's out there. You can even get a couple Google searches out and you'll find most of the skills that you need to build and learn. They're all out there. But the question is, if someone knows that they need to do sales, why isn't it that they are hungry and looking for absorbing all of the information that exists out there to develop their skills in sales, knowing that this might be the greatest thing they can do to grow their business, be more successful. And that's why the mindset annoying like I'll, I'll admit i find it kind of annoying that mindset is so important i had somebody on my podcast and we talked about is mindset overrated 
And we realized like, actually, mindset is underrated because <laughs> when you have the mindset and you're like, oh my God, when I reach out to these people, when I sell this to them and I know the language to speak for them to understand the value of what I want to provide to them, I'll start being hungry for learning skills. I'll get up and stay up late so that I can learn these techniques. I won't hesitate to make a call. I won't hesitate to do an email and reach a campaign or schedule a webinar or whatever is the presentation I need to do. You know, you'll come from the right mindset and you'll be like, this is so important. And so as someone that considers themselves, you know, a person obsessed with efficiency, I love marketing technology, sales technology. I love learning techniques. And often I'm always thinking like, what's the tactic I need to apply? And I'm always coming back that, oh my God, the mindset is really what you can work on that makes the biggest difference. Because once that's fixed, then you start putting the pieces of everything else within your circle. Now, right at the very beginning of your book, Jason, you use the uh, phrase, you, you talk about um, the traditional phrase, always be closing. And your reiteration of that is always be caring. And do you think going into an, a, in a, a situation with that in mind, always be caring, helps you get into that right mindset? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, I had to be a bit cheeky and I do have references to Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. So we got to go back there. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, when, when you care, like when you're like, Oh my God, I care about the people I'm serving. Like they're not just numbers. They're not just leads. Like you're serving other human beings. And you know, a big part of my book is uh, very prescriptive and it's towards the end when I get people to go through five different loves of selling. And what I want people to get is more clarity on like, what's the difference you're making? Who are you serving? And by taking the time and showing that you care enough to clarify that, why, why is it important for you to sell this product to this person? You know, if you're working for Philip Morris and you know, I'll take a jab at them cause it's an easy one, cigarettes come per me. Um, and let's say I'm a salesperson that sells a pack of cigarettes to, you know, someone in his early twenties, knowing that I'll convert that into a lifelong, lifelong customer. I'll make sure to sell them exactly why this is amazing. But then you go to bed at night and you're like, was that a good thing? Like assuming that you're a non-smoker and you have to go and do something like this, there's going to be a disconnect. It's not, it's going to, there's going to be something wrong. I think we're all here and trying to do our best figuring out like how to make the world a better place in some capacity. And yes, circumstances and different levels of abundance or privilege might make it so that you have more time or less energy to be able to focus on the greater good. But for most people who are listening to a podcast, I would think that you have a certain level of affluence that makes it so that you can extend your, uh, call, it, call it your circle of compassion to care for the people you're going to sell to. So then you start answering those questions being like, okay, this person's going to buy my product. Is my product actually solving their problem? Am I excited with the fact that once they buy, they're going to get a good transformation? Do I know who they are? Do I know how painful it is for them to live without having that problem solved? You know, if we'd look at any other professions, let's say doctors, and I, I hear this example so often, and it's so obvious when you read it out, a doctor, imagine someone walks in, they got a broken arm and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't approach them. You know, I could fix their arm, but I don't know. I don't want to be too pushy. That would sound absurd yet. If we had that level of confidence and we care about these people, the level of confidence in the fact that what we offer is amazing and the reasons we want to do it actually makes a positive difference, then by God, we're going to use the processes we need to make that sale happen. Absolutely. Now, you touched upon your, your, your what you call in the book, your five-step formula to selling with love, impact, client, product, process, and yourself. So, Jason, do you want to just give us a, a flavor of, of, those, of those five scenarios? Yeah. So it's kind of like a checklist process. And you know, Trevor, you were saying earlier on, like, how do I know if I'm selling with love or not? And I think doing a little audit on all these different loves kind of gives you a, a sense of like, okay, where maybe is there a gap that I could fix? And the first one being loving the impact is you'll find it funny. It, it kind of matches the key questions you need to answer anyway. So the impact is really the why, like, why are we even selling? Like, what's the difference we're doing for the client? what's going to be the ripple effect of these sales happening and you existing as a business, growing as a business, selling this to hundreds, thousands, whatever your, your metrics look like for your size of business. But if you keep existing, what's the ripple effect that exists from every sale you make? And of course, I always add an element of, you know, what are your personal incentives for selling? And there's nothing wrong with being a little selfish around the reasons why you want to sell and making that clear. And I encourage people to take a moment to write it out like, okay, when a client buys, this is why it's important. And if I keep doing this, 
that's why it's important. And for myself, it's important because, and when you answer that, you get at least a gut check on the why, the impact of, of the sales you make. And once you have that clarity, then you're like, well, I know why I wake up in the morning, put on a suit and get on the phones because now I know I'm going to be making some differences. So that's the first one. Okay. Um, moving from there, I talk about loving the client. And this one is really just a question of understanding, right? So often we don't get into the shoes of our clients. We're actually more stuck in our own heads. You know, all of the limiting beliefs we have or the neediness we have. We think about our commission checks or what our monthly income is, but we got to hit the brakes and be like, hey, I'm going to care for the person and the people I'm going to sell to. So who am I going to be serving? And if you recall, Trevor, you know, as in a brief description, you know, just before we hit record, I'm wondering like, who are we talking to and how do I make this resonate to them? Because it's not about you. It's about who you're serving. So you want to always be able to have an understanding of who you sell to. Are they facing the problems that you're looking to make a difference in and make an impact? Okay. How relevant is that problem in their life? And so once you start to understand what their current circumstances are and where they want to go from the moment they purchase your product and then it solves that problem, then you can have an understanding, know the language. And when you speak to people, you could say, listen, I understand you might be struggling with your presentations. You might be trying to get better sales. Well, what we're going to be doing is making sure we expose you to the right people, all the different dimensions of sales so that you can be the best when you show up every day, you know, just a quick example, but if you understand your avatar and you've heard this, this is basic marketing stuff for those who are in the know, but I'm trying to teach a lot of sales to non sales people as well. Right. But I'm talking market research, understand your persona, understand your avatar. This is all the same stuff, but it's so important and often overlooked. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I think, you know, Regular listeners to this podcast will have heard guests and myself banging on all the time about if you want to be successful with that presentation or with that pitch, you've got to think audience or client first, you second. And we see so many people in that environment who just want to be themselves first. Hey, look at me. Look at my product. How brilliant I am. And there's no love uh, or care given or cut perceived to give to the client, you know, I'm, I'm not here for you. I'm just here for you to say, yes, you know, I'm here for me, you know? Um, so it's a big, big factor. So how does, what about love your product though? I mean, does, is that really that, you know, do, I suppose you've got to believe in your product, but do you really need to love your product? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting, right? Cause there's always a story I like to tell, which is, you know, finding the miracle cure to uh, cancer. Right. Um, and, and like, if you had that and you knew somebody was diagnosed with it and you know, they have, you know, let's say they have the purchasing power to be able to buy it and they're not responding to your email. And then you, like, would you, would you call them? Would you go knock at their door knowing that you could save a life because the product is just that foolproof? You'd be a very enthusiastic. And I see it so much that people will come to me and say, oh, yeah, I hate selling. I'm so bad at selling and I'm very insecure at selling. And then. I start digging a little more and I realize that it's not that they're insecure about selling. They're insecure that they're going to sell. Someone will say yes, and they won't be able to fulfill with the product. And that ends up being very true whenever it's a service based business where the individual delivers that service. So there's like, you know, an enmeshment between the delivery of the product and the sale of the product. And now there's this, this overthinking and this insecurity that comes into way. So yes, I think you should love your product. Yes, I think that you should have done the work on the impact and the work on the client before doing the work on the product, because sometimes you're too obsessed with the product. And coming back to the story you were saying is if you're the product and you're too obsessed on yourself over what problems you solve and the people you serve, then you're going to be like, I'm going to scream at the top of my lung about how great I am, but nobody cares. Nobody wants what I have. And there you go. You look like a fool. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, it is a massive, massive thing. So. The final two uh, steps in your formula, Jason, are process and yourself. So do you want to just give us an overview of those? Yeah, the, you know, once you've done, you know, the impact, the client and the product, you've got the research done. So you've built a product that truly serves clients and makes the impact you're looking to do. So love the process is really just realizing that sales is not manipulation. It's empathy. It's learning the language that's necessary for people to understand that you're trying to solve problems in their life. So yes, you start reading books on sales. Yes, you listen to this podcast and so many more episodes on this podcast to improve your presentations. So you can do one-to-ones, you can do group presentations, you learn formats, mediums, objections, handling, everything else that you can do 
so that you can reach people and be able to have them understand and earn their trust, earn their attention so they can see that, wow, you've been the person I've been looking for to solve my problems. So that's when you start reading all the books and you love the process of selling. You're not hesitating. You learn it, you love it, and you get better at it. And then finally, the one about self-love kind of touches on the product if you're a service-based business, but it's just knowing that whatever stage that you are, whether it's as a business owner or as a salesperson, you're always showing up at your best and you're always improving and you know, you're giving it your all. So have some compassion, have some patience, go out there, learn, put into practice. You're not going to be perfect, but you're going to be progress every single time. So I encourage people to do a lot of self care, realize that it's an emotional roller coaster when you're in sales. I think it's one of the fastest paths to growth because you're always encountering other human and whether that connection is a successful sale or maybe it's not, there's something to learn. You'll be growing. And uh, hey, you might be making a few commission dollars in your pocket as well. <laughs> well, that's really interesting that because when I was uh, in the book, I was reading about reading that section about yourself. And it reminded me that many, many years ago, I was very fortunate to go on a very high level leadership program here in the UK at the Ashridge Business School. Um, and um, one of the takeaways uh, for me was a very simple phrase, look after yourself. And the point was that, you know, you as in business, you, especially in leadership roles, you know, you find yourself you know, full on all the time. And sometimes you forget to step back and do something for you. And that could be going to the gym or going for a walk or the way you eat or whatever it might be. But, you know, um, there was a, there's a quote in your book, Jason, that says selling demands being in a heightened state of enthusiasm and attention listening and caring about others relentlessly <laughs> and, and you know you you talk about that energy as well and it is draining isn't it it is draining you know if you're at that all the time at that level you, you know it is very draining so you have to kind of take care of yourself look after yourself and keep learning as part of that so to, let's just let's just spin back. I'd like to spin back a little bit as we get towards the end of this episode, Jason. Let's just talk about the energy as well. You know, you talked about the energy exchange. You talked about the kind of clients that you're working with to give them that energy to make them realize that, you know, selling is a key part of what they do if they're going to grow their company, make a difference, get their message out there. Because, you know, you say that uh, your mission is to transform the world by teaching companies to care. So just give us a little bit of a view as what you're doing and how all people can get involved with you. Yeah. Well, you know, the big thing for for energy is just when when you get to come from a place of love, like it's a lot less draining. You can go to bed, sleep on your pillow, calm, knowing that you did your best. And you know, there's probably at the learning phase, it's even more draining because maybe we're not at the level we'd want us to be. So that's going to be a little draining, but be forgiving and understand that it's not something that you reach selling with love and you're statically there. You're going to be human. There'll be ups and downs. And from there, it's just maximize the ups, take care of yourself and you'll be improving and you'll be having fun doing it. So a lot of people that I work with, you know, they, they come through my, my online courses. Um, for anybody who wants to go to jasonmarkcampbell.com, you can see I have a ton of free stuff there uh, where they can actually go through a way to identify, attract, and close their ideal clients. Uh, it's a free course that I offer on the platform that people can go in and check out. I love hearing from people that listen to me from a podcast. So LinkedIn, of course, we're on sales. we got to be on LinkedIn, <laughs> right? Um, come and connect with me on LinkedIn, but please do add a note. If you do uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and tell me you heard me on this podcast, uh, that way I can give credit where credit's due. And uh, you know what, Trevor, I'll do something cool for your people is um, I have this, this five day challenge. I usually sell for 500 bucks uh, for anybody who connects with me on LinkedIn. Uh, they can just tell me they heard me on this show and I'll give it to them for absolutely free. Wow. There we go. And I'll, I'll put the details in the show notes, everybody. Uh, so you can check that out, how to, how to find Jason on LinkedIn and all that sort of stuff. So, and is that the best, uh, the best way of getting hold of you, Jason, because to round up the podcast in a minute or two, I'm going to ask you for a, a couple of top tips to uh, for listeners to take away and implement straight away. But are those the best places to find you, your website and the LinkedIn that you just mentioned? Yeah, you'll find all the info there. Uh, and especially if you connect with me on LinkedIn, it is not my assistant, it is me. And so you'll be able to have some conversations. And I love hearing from people that had a breakthrough or some impact from what I've shared, because that's what I'm all about. I'm trying to help you know, make the world a better place one sale at a time. And, uh, you know, it's kind of how I close the book as well is it's not just about how we sell, but it's also about how we buy. And I think if we start tuning in a bit more about like, what's the vibe on the way that we purchase things also it allows us to shape the world and what we want to see. Cause every transaction creates more of the reality that we want to see. 
So let's buy some good stuff. Let's sell some good stuff. And uh, we improve the world one transaction at a time. <laughs> now, um, I forgot to mention the book there. So how do, uh, what's the best place for people to go and buy the book? Yeah, it's on, it's like Amazon for most of the people that are in the US, you can buy it, buy it there. I don't know if the audiobook will be listed on Amazon. It's a slow approval process, but it's coming up. Uh, if not, you got your electronic version, you got your physical books. Um, so check it out on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, all the major book retailers, you'll be able to purchase it online. Jason, this has been great. And I'm, I'm sure it's given all our listeners, whether they're doing one-to-one -one interactions or sales pitches or sales presentation, a, a chance to stand back and just look at themselves and think about, okay, am I really, you know, can I do this better? So have you got a couple of top tips that those people could sort of like put into action straight away as a way of helping them utilize what we've been talking about today? Yeah. I think the easiest thing I would give for people is just going through the major questions, the the why, the who, and the what. All right, let's, let's just do a very basic takeaway from this podcast for you is why. Why are you selling? Are you confident in the why? And if you are not, take a moment to reassess why are you selling and write it out so you can be like, yeah, I know my why of selling. Who? Do I know who I'm selling to? Do I know enough about them? Do I feel confident that when I sell it to them that they're the people that are going to benefit? And again, being with the definition of sales being what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return. That's what selling with love is all about. So do you know who you're selling to? And can you with confidence know that what you're selling to them is going to give them more value? And then the what? That's the product. Is the product the right product for you to sell to the right person to make the difference you're trying to make? So you answer the why, the who, the what. Simple tip, but just a quick iteration. If you're about to get on sales calls, you're about to do some campaigns, Ask yourself those three questions. Am I clear on my why, clear on my who, clear on my what? And if not, then maybe you need to do a bit more preparation because the level of hesitancy you'll have in between each activity is going to waste so much more time than taking the time to get clear and then move forward. And I guess combining that with that, you know, what we talked about mindset earlier, Jason, as well, to give you that, put you in that confident frame of mind to think, right, I am going to make a difference to the person that I'm now about to call. That's right. Great stuff. Jason, it's been fantastic having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, some listeners, some great stuff there. So, you know, do do share this podcast and do make the most of it because it's brilliant stuff. And do check out Jason's book, Selling with Love. And don't forget the five-day challenge that he's talked about as well. Jason, thank you very much for coming on the show. It was my pleasure, Trevor. Thank you for listening in and I'll talk to you next time.